Well, hiya, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Uh, I wanted to come to you today with a uh, book chat. I uh, recently finished the book uh, Tales of the South Pacific by James Mishner. Uh, this book was a book that I actually started last year. I had, I had originally finished, those that follow the channel might remember that I originally finished The Drifters, which is like a big, thick monster by James Mishner. And I've got a ton of Mishner books, but I have not read very many of them. And so I made the goal for myself that I was going to finish my Mishner collection. Now, Mishner's books, like I said, are big, thick things. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. So I was not expecting to read these like all in one year. There's no way I could do that. I mean, there's other people that could. I could not. Um, I was expecting to dip into maybe a couple of them each year until eventually down the line I get done with them. If I could get three done in one year, that would be like a major accomplishment, a major achievement. And um, so I started reading this one again last year, Tales of the South Pacific. Now I started reading it, I think it was towards the end of summer or beginning of the, or end of fall. And um, I went into it open-minded. I had, I've had this book for a long time when I, I was originally buying used Mishner books. And at one time or another, I bought several of them new, uh, the paperback versions, thinking I was going to read those. And so, anyway, picked it up and finally got to it. It is a, well, let me, it's about, what, it's 384 pages. And uh, this is a post-World War II book that was originally, originally published in, I think, 1946 is what it says here. And uh, this one says it has a copyright think it's 1984 but I was kind of questioning that just be, because the simple reason that when I bought this is it, was, it, it wasn't that long ago I didn't think they would carry that old of books I would think they'd cycle through but maybe I'm wrong anyway uh, 1946 is the original copyright date so um, Mishner as he's writing this story again post World War II and I believe Mishner served in World War II and that's where he gets a lot of these ideas and he became a writer afterwards and so he started putting together several different small stories. So through this through this whole book, you got you got one storyline that runs through the whole thing, or I don't even want to call it storyline. You got one string that runs through the whole thing, and there's a lot of characters on that string, and they're all connected in one way or another. And um, so each chapter is one of those characters' stories. And then as the book progresses, it shows that string connecting the entire group. And so, um, Mister has set, like I said, several different stories in here. So to tell to tell a a review of the entire thing becomes a little bit more detailed because uh, a little bit more difficult because of the details in each one of the individual stories. So I think I'll just highlight maybe a couple of them, and um, I'm not going to get into like all the character names and stuff. But they he's got um, he's got a story on uh, just. Um, resupplying uh, the South Pacific because that was what a lot of these islands ended up being. He's got um, he's got some love stories going through this where you got one guy who's who's actually married back in the States and he comes to the South Pacific and he has a lot of different girlfriends. Um, he gets uh, connected to these a couple of these girls and then of course later in the book those girls have their own chapters of their stories in the South Pacific and he talks about a lot of ladies who came out to be nurses to help the war effort but also just to see the world because this was going to be their only opportunity and a lot of these girls were looking for somebody to marry they were looking for officers they were looking for um, you know you'll as we get to going we see that there's a lot of uh, Frenchmen out in the South Pacific and that uh, there's a lot of plantation owners um, and it, it's very interesting uh, because in, in a lot of cases as he's talking through this he hits a lot of big issues you know um, just uh, he a lot of it's talking about the weight the weight on the next battle some of these guys sat in the South Pacific on these islands and maybe it was a supply island or uh, you know just where the um, is it the CBs came in and they built the the airstrips he's got a whole chapter on that and um, 
a lot of these guys sat around not fighting and uh, some of this story pertains to that but there also is a battle scene in here that he does an excellent job with it's kind of the culmination of the whole book where there's a big battle that they're, they've been all waiting and they finally go to battle but anyway um, it's it's got a story of, of a nurse who meets a plantation owner and falls in love with him and she's like this is the guy I'm gonna stay with him and in the process as she asks around about him to learn more about him because as we know you know world war ii marriages a lot of them were very quick marriages um you, you'll find people meet each other and then a week later they get married uh because they're worried about the war and and um you know they just want to th find that special love connection i guess and anyway um you got a lady who meets a a um, plantation owner but as she digs into his life she finds that he's actually had um uh, was it, I wouldn't say there are wives, but live-in girlfriends with several of the island girls. And he's had kids with all of these island girls. And it gets into this, you know, she's all set to marry him, but it gets into race. And it talks about, you know, World War II time period, what the what the ideas of, of race was. And uh, she was appalled at him wanting to um, not only talk to an islander, but just to, or but to, um, make love to an islander there was a big issue with that and and um it it, it goes head first into that um uh, into that topic and it talks about um there's another there's another officer another chapter talks about an officer who goes to an island and and uh meets this girl and he's he's battling the same stuff and he's going back to the uh back to his original island and he talks with the other officers and they're like ah, i wouldn't i wouldn't be with you know an islander that's that's just wrong and all this and and but he's in love with this girl and th the reality of it is the girl's mom was trying to set her up and and but the girl fell in love with him too but he started realizing the almost impossibility of having this relationship and she ends up getting married you know to another um to a plantation owner because her mom was trying to set her up in the uh, so that she would ha have a good life. And uh, anyway, I'm kind of rambling here, but the, um, as I said, each chapter has a whole set of characters all to its own. Um, th there was a funny one about a, a um, officer who had to deal with the letters that were written back and forth, and of course those get censored. And one of the young people who's writing letters back and forth to his wife the letters are kind of dirty and the officer's blushing the whole time he's reading this and he's like oh my gosh i can't believe they're you know writing this and he has to bring this young guy in and say um do you realize this isn't right and, and they start talking about the censorship issues and all of this and um so it gives you a good idea of the cultural um aspect of the time period and i thought that was kind of kind of neat and um one thing I wanted to read to you is a little part right here at the end of the book, and I thought it was this was after um, after the big battle, and of course you know in war people die, and so I thought this was an interesting chapter. the The character is is visiting one of the cemeteries that have been put together after that battle happened, and um, it says, "Yet there before me lay almost three hundred Americans who thought as I had thought." They could not die, but there were white crosses. I was appalled by the relentless manner in which one dead plus one dead plus one dead add up to three white crosses. If you sit at home and read that 281 men die in taking an island, the number is only a symbol for the mind to classify. But when you stand at the white crosses, the 281 dead become men, the sons, the husbands, and the lovers. And so it just, you know, goes on to talk about the impact of war and, um, you know, the, throughout the war, the chapter on the, on the battle, he, he really gets into some of the senseless loss of life, you know, and how some of the officers said, well, we're going to lose them. We know we are, but we have to have that. So, you know, they send men into battle knowing they're going to have huge losses and, um, some of it I mean, was probably a right decision. Some of it was senseless and, um, you know, gets into all of that that argument back and forth. But anyway, James Mishner, Tales of the South Pacific. Um, last year when I tried to read this, I almost DNF'd it, and I'm really glad I did not. I sincerely think it was just my mindset and where I was at in life and what was going on in life. I was not 
in the right mindset to read this. But I came back and I'm really glad I did because uh, it turned out to be a very, very good book. And um, I'm going to rate this book a four out of five stars. Um, I just, I, I enjoyed it. I would recommend, uh, recommend reading this and getting started on James Mishner if you haven't. And if you're going to ask me what Mishner I'm reading next, I have no clue. I have not fully answered that myself. I've got a couple books i got to get through before I try to find my next Mishner. So um, I leave that to another video. So anyway, BookTube, thank you for watching and happy reading.